I'm going to get a second here, get all this stuff set up, guys. How's everybody doing? Yeah, G fam, right? Okay. Oh, let's see if I remember how to do this. Flintlock, what's up? Long time no see, buddy. I'm working on it here, fellas. So I'm trying to use my phone to film, but I can get the questions and stuff on my wife's iPad so I can see them uh, because the camera is going to be stationed above me. So bear with me for a second. Probably should have this done first. Oh, hey Luke. Okay, well, I don't even need the Wi Fi over here, so. All right. Oh, thanks, Sheep Fam. Olivia, what's up? Fisher? Boy, I'm going to have to move this a little closer. Anyway, guys, I'm going to do a little start um, beginning to end, flushing, coon. Anyone that has questions, um, I'm going to try to catch them on here. I'm going to try to catch them um, on the video that I'm watching, but if I don't answer it and it's flushing related, fl feel free to ask again, all right? Because um, it's pretty small print, but uh, we're going to see what we got going here. I got a few different uh, coon laid out over the last couple days. Um, this should make it a little interesting. Uh, kind of give you guys a perspective. Boy, I am way unprepared. <laughs> a lot of people joining in. Alright. Some of you probably know, first thing you got to do is brush everything out. Um, if you have any burr in this at all, even one, your knife is going to catch it and rip a hole in it. I guarantee it. I'll brush it out with a comb, um, everything. Something the size of a pea, even, will we'll bust that bust that hide open when you go over it with a knife. Mr. Somebody, what's up? Buy some glasses. No, I, where my phone's going to be, Anthony's going to be way above me. I'm using actually looking at my wife's iPad, which is right now about three feet away, but the print is so small that I might struggle a little bit. But we'll get it figured out. Okay, so something I do want to point out, um, I'll probably go ahead and get the phone positioned for this. Bear with me guys, this will be interesting. Oh, my wife's iPad's behind. I can't tell where we're at. Oh, no, it'd help if I just get up updated with it. All right, there we go. You can kind of see what I have to work with here. Um, I guess I should have emptied out my box first. I didn't even think about doing that. Like I said, guys, I'm a little behind today. Well, that's all right. 
Hey Luke, if you're still watching, I uh, stole your trash can. I might just have to keep it from you, bud. This thing works pretty good. All right. Uh, Shane, no, I don't have any traps out yet. This is a box that I kind of designed here, oh, three or four years ago. Works really good for all my scraps. <laughs> Luke, can everybody hear me all right? Picture coming through? Um, talk to me guys. Let me know what what it looks like um, I'm working away here, so Everybody's got it. Oh awesome awesome uh, Trev, our spring beaver goes uh, till April 15th, so I got a ways yet. Okay, well, sounds like we're doing good. Alright, so the first thing, I'll take this, go to wipe my beam down. The first thing I want to talk about, guys, is um, the temperature of your fur when you're flushing it, okay? This coon has been thought out since last night. Well, I thought it out last night. Uh, we're hitting 70 degrees here right now. Uh, it's pretty, pretty warm. So, this thing isn't terrible, but normally the warmer they are, the greasier they are. Oh boy, I wonder if the other one's a good example of it. There we go. This one's a little. A little more I'm talking about. So the warmer that fur and leather gets, the greasier it is. Now, I'm gonna show you one that I just thought out this morning. And I don't know how well this is gonna show up on camera, but this fat is solid, it's firm, it's gonna flush nice. This one is just grease and I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a minute. Um, we'll go ahead and flush them out. But you want your fur cold, guys. You you want this stuff cold. See if anyone's talking. Hey, catfish, how we doing? Hey, McLeod, how we doing? Long time no see, bud. Um, Judith and Dan, I have not. Um, I don't like adding much stuff to it. Uh, I do know people that do it, but I just kind of, I don't know, I kind of deal with it. I don't like those little slick coon like that, but yeah, it's 70 degrees here today. Way too warm. Of course, I'm wearing a hoodie because uh, with my apron, um, the straps will dig into my neck if I don't have a hoodie on. Makes it kind of kind of frustrating I guess you could say but all right so we're gonna flush that um, that that kind of slimy coon first I'm gonna go ahead and touch my blade up here a little bit once I figure out where my steel's at by the way in case you haven't noticed um, how I sharpen my knife, and this is against everything anyone's ever learned about sharpening a knife. Here's the beveled side, the flat side. I'll go one, two, down the back flat side once, and down the top side again once. And that puts a pretty good edge on my knife. I'm using the caribou, which has a lot of flex in it. 
Um, that's one thing I would not skimp on is a flushing knife if you're just starting off. Uh, don't get one of those $14 junk knives. They just, they're too soft to steal and it, it's a real pain. But um, if you haven't split the tail already, which I don't split my tails when I skin them, um, I wait until wait until I flush them. Um, normally when I'm skinning them, I'm in a hurry, just get them done. And it doesn't hurt anything to leave it, leave it intact. But anyway, okay. You want this thing tight on this beam, guys. I always go down the back first. Let me get my, oh boy, I, touching my wife's iPad with my gloves might be a bad choice. Hey, Dredger. 37 there, Chad. Yeah, it's supposed to cool down tonight, too. Welcome to the party, Chad. It's been a little bit since I've seen you in here. Okay, let me... We're doing some adjustments, some fine-tuning. Maybe. I'm by myself, guys, so bear with me. Mark Larson, what's up, bud? All right. Now you want that fur pulled as tight as you can. Um, probably can't see up here by the head as well, but I want to make sure everyone's get the main main video here. But now I'll start with your sharp side, which is your beveled outside, and I'm gonna start up here by the head with a little slicing action and all of a sudden you'll see right there if you can see I'll pull it down off the beam a little bit you can see where I started to break through and hit that leather basically you're starting right behind the ears with a little slicing action huh. this guy actually got shot with bird shot at some point there's a lot of bird shot in this that's crazy that is just crazy. <laughs> but anyway, just slice it on the top of the beam. You do not want to get too far off on the side. You can kind of see how far I'm slicing. I'm not crazy slicing, just nice and easy across the top. Now, once I get to about where the arms are, I'm going to switch over to the other side, and I'm just going to push. Ooh, this guy's torn up. This guy is torn up. Boy, this is a bad first example, guys. Wow, you guys see that? That is insane. Rip the tail off. That happens if you're not careful. Um, it doesn't really matter because I don't use the, the tail for anything anyway. The tail gets cut off. I probably rip about one out of every four or five of them off. But down here, guys, you're just using that dull side and going right down the tail. Now I'll switch it. I'll roll it over to the side where I got one leg view. I'm going to move my camera here a little bit, guys. I don't like where that's at. I'm going to start right up here at the cheek again, got the knife the wrong way, and just slice down. I 
I'm using the dual side only now. Dual side only uh, for everything from here on out pretty much. I wonder if a farmer helped me dispatch this one. You'd be surprised how many coon I come up on guys that are actually uh, dead in my traps. There's quite a bit more than people think. Matter of fact, I had someone use a deer slug on one of them this year. Yeah, G fam, it's bad. Yeah, Chad, right? Uh, Anthony, I'm going to guess somebody dispatched this one for me. I probably had 20 or 30 coon this year that were dead as soon as I got out there. So, um, it's crazy. Ah, huh, funk flintlock that's crazy i did not know that yeah this one this one's pretty bad i'm just gonna get this one cleaned up a little bit guys and get him out of here this is kind of a really bad example but you see how kind of slimy it is um, that's because this is warm this coon is warm uh, probably a little too warm to be quite honest with you now what I generally do once I get them flushed off I'll pull them fur back in and I'll throw them in my tub for now well, let's see if uh this big boy is going to flush out a little better. This is a huge coon. Absolutely huge. Yeah, Logan, I thought about stuff like that too. Um, something I need to venture into a little bit more for next year for sure. This old boy's a little colder. Got the tail split all the way. This boy's gonna be some work. These big coon have a lot of gristle in them, especially on their backs. Hey, Raymond. So if you can see this, I'm gonna start right up here between, between his ears again. Nice, easy. I'm not putting any downward pressure on this at all. I'm almost just letting the knife cut down in and see where I started there I'm gonna get over and now I'm putting a little bit of pressure on it if your knife wants to go over the top change your angle to a steeper downward pitch so like right here it's not wanting to cut in I start changing my pitch and look now we're cutting in so same with right here it's not wanting to cut in start steepening my pitch and now we're cutting Just little cuts with your sharp side you're not doing anything crazy here and I'm moving my knife too with where I want to cut from side to side if you see that um, it's not just flat on top move to one side or the other I'm following the curve of the beam now this one since he's an old boar he might need flushed down past the shoulders a little bit with the sharp side. Now you want to be careful because that fur is starting to have some room in it versus up here it's, t it's really tight. You know down here we got a lot more play as we move down. So we want to make sure to keep that tight. I'll pull the nose down a little bit and I'll go ahead and switch to my dull side. It's going to be kind of tough from here but uh, we'll get them. Now this takes a little bit of 
just a little bit of brute force once you switch to that dull side, guys. By the way, I think this is going to be a 5X Coon. This thing is huge. Yeah, Mike, that's not a bad idea, too, um, to, to narrow down that, that gristle part. Um, that's just kind of a way I've done it and what's worked for me. Now remember, we're still on the dual side. I'm going to be a little more careful here. I don't want to rip this one's tail off. Now generally, down here along the base of the tail, it's, it's a little more gristly. Uh, you want to switch to the sharp side again. Mostly on your bigger coon, some of your smaller coon you're all right with. But, uh, it, it, yeah, you just kind of take it nice and easy because the fur is loose here. You know, you got that give again, which is easy to cut in. And I'm just going to work my way down the tail. Almost do one consistent cutting motion through the tail. I'll switch to my dull side. Once you get past a certain point, there's really not a whole lot on them anyway. Now I'll bring it back to do a side. Man, that's hot in here. Up here by the cheek again, using the sharp side. Switch over to my, my dual side. Did you see that? Um, I'm really bad about explaining it. I'm kind of getting in a, a groove here, but switch over to that dual side and I'm just going to push down. I'm not even going to finish that side. I'm going to go to the belly. Um, it's kind of a preference. I just work around in a circle, but I'm using only the dual side here. Only the dual. Now you see I'm to that, to the front leg here. I'm kind of pushing up and over as I go over that leg okay um, and I kind of work it from the sides and then I want to get behind it I'll push the leg up and get behind it just like so kind of work down the side but see how it balls up the fur balls up and if you look right there I did put a little hole in it um, nothing that's gonna matter but I'm going to lift the leg up and just use the angles of my knife to go around the leg. Um, for you beginners, put the leg right on the nose of your beam. And you can work all the way around that with tight leather. Uh, works really well. Just take the head and you can spin it around and do the whole front, front leg. And just like so. That's the whole front leg done. Now we're kind of working down the side of the belly. Uh, this is a big coon, so it's going to take a little more than my normal three or four sides. Still using the dual side. Hey, thanks for stopping in, Trev. Still on the dual side, guys. Just kind of using brute force now but I don't want to I don't like stretching out too far that's kind of why I got my beam uh, horizontal because it killed my back with the vertical beam uh, going all the way down so I try not to stretch out anymore in about 12 14 inches work my way down the leg And see how that balled up right there? If you try pushing like that, you're gonna rip right through the leg. Um, I actually prefer it when the fur rolls up my knife like that because then it'll flatten out as I go. Kind of like so. 
But no matter what, you do not want to have fur bald in any position. Like that right there, that would rip through it. You want to keep that tight as, as much as you can. This big boy is actually getting kind of slimy too. Back up here on the, the other side now. Working behind the ear. I just switched to my dull side. I don't know if you caught that or not. Uh, but, it, you know, I'm trying to explain it the best I can by kind of getting in motion here. Hey, thanks, Internet Vet. Uh, I actually just did put the leg on the beam. Yeah, Anthony, that ain't no doubt. Um, no, Flintlock. Actually, the, the, the caribou knives are very... Um, they're not circular. I did have that issue... Um, with the, the, the neckers a little bit, but these caribous I do not. Um, I really, really like them. Again, just kind of go up and over that leg and get in behind it. I'll kind of push the leg off to the side. And just got to be careful because you see that fur balled up right there, and I do not want to put a hole in that. I'll go ahead and bring the leg up. Oh, I'm still in my good shoes, too. Oh, well. Bring it up and just work all the way around that leg. I hate slimy coon. So much better yesterday when it's still cold out. Now, if you see that right there, the camera will pick that up or not. If I push on that, you see how the fur's moving, it will want to rip if I push downward. So I kind of have to go up and over. This is a big coon, fellas. Dull side. Just get some of that excess fat off. We raised some big Iowa coons here, guys. <laughs> this is a good one. A lot better than that first one I picked. No, oh, Kevin, they're worth more than that. Uh, I'm hoping, hoping to get between six and eight for them. Um, it's not a lot of money. Most of my income comes from the parts and pieces, but I do take a lot of pride in my put up though. Absolutely, Mike. That's why you want to make sure there's no burrs. Um, even something the size of a of a pea will rip a hole in this as you're flushing it. Now that right there is going to be cut off anyway, so I'm not going to kind of really worry about the, the testicles and such. Um, I'm going to have to talk to my Skinner about that one. I don't know why there's testicles left in that. We should have sold them all. <laughs> But anyway, guys, that's actually a that's actually a pretty good conditioned um, 5x coon here. That's a good size one. We'll get him boarded here in a little bit. But right now, he goes leather in, throw him in the bucket. Give my beam a good swipe. Trying to get some of that excess oil and grease off there. <laughs> Jesus, that's a good coon. Uh, Mr. Somebody, all my coon go on the same board, every one of them. Uh, for that re for the reason of everything of mine will be uniform. Wow, those geese were low. All right, guys, again, I'll split the tail. Man, it's hot out here. Now this is a smaller coon. Start up at the head, kind of a straight up and down angle for the most part to get started. Once you get underneath that, then you can kind of flatten her out. But 
I'll kind of do this one at my normal speed. Now on your bigger coon, you want to switch to a sharp side to get this nasty stuff off the base of the tail up here, but uh, your smaller ones have a lot less gristle. You use your sharp side a lot less. They're easier to flush for sure, but you know, they're not worth nearly as much either. So. actually got a slight conibear mark on it uh, if you look close kind of wonder if this is one of my uh, foul caught conibear ones because he still had a bullet in him uh, Blakely is no I just pitch him uh, Flintlock, I don't have a single fan on right now. Uh, I turned them all off because I figured you wouldn't be able to hear me over them. Between the walk-in freezer, which I still left running because it's 70 degrees out, but uh, if I turn the fans on, I don't know if you guys be able to hear me at all. So. Just using the dull side on 75-80% of these coon. Just brute forcing the fat right off the tail end. All right, take the leather, throw it in, throw in the bucket, grab another one. tail split pull it down keep the pressure on it almost vertical cut to get going and then flatten it out oh this is a good one this is a good coon you can tell when this is really white that's what you're looking for this white leather is a prime coon uh, after this one I'm gonna do one of my really small ones see if it's blue or not I don't know when I caught it but uh, your small coon don't prime up until late. Okay, so now, now I can tell the fur's wanting to grab. So I'm going to switch over to my uh, dull side, and you don't have to be quite as cautious with the um, the fur folding over on itself as as the sharp side of cutting it. It turned a little blue here. Uh, there's a good example this if the whole coon was this color that's a good coon once you start getting to this light blue you can see a few hairs pulling through here um, it's not a terrible blue you know it's not a, a bad but it'll be probably a slate go ahead and take this off the back side it's a smaller coon so I'm really not gonna need the the um, sharp side of the knife along the base yeah see right there would be your hardest spot on the base of this tail Uh, Judith and Dan, I actually have like three, but I've lost them. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Flintlock. That's all right, Mr. Somebody. I appreciate it, though. Now, this one, we got a little crazy on the uh, ear cut here, so this can be sketchy. Um, you kind of have to uh, work your knife around it. You will become one with your knife in a way. That sounds funny to say, but you will learn what you can and can't do with it. And you will destroy a bunch of furs when you start, guys. Uh, don't get discouraged. I saw a gentleman here. Um, 
Well, actually, it was in Blakely's live last night, I think it was, uh, that said he finished the coon and put all kinds of holes in it. And honestly, you're probably going to put holes in at least the first 10 to 15 um, until you learn to, to get good with your knife and your beam. Uh, but once you do, man, it's it, you can move so fluently through this. over to the belly side it's a smaller coon again so now this is a sow even though it's a small coon it's a sow of course I took all the yeah I, this one's never had a litter but when you have a sow that has a litter those nipples will be a little bigger they'll be like a pea so you really have to be careful not to hit one uh, because you'll tear a hole in it just like you would a, a burr um, if I get a couple more big sows here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. There you, there you go. That was me getting sloppy. The fur folded up on itself, and I caught it. And I ripped a hole in it. There's no burr there. There's no nothing. That was just fur folded over fur. Now I'll do the other side. Sharp side, straight down. Cut through. I'm going to flip over to the dull side right away because these sides are pretty, pretty easy. It's a smaller coon, but he'll still probably make a 2x. Um, LTO, I'm probably somewhere around, oh, I'd hate to even say, I still got a few things left to sell, so I haven't ran the full numbers yet, but I'd say probably around seven to ten dollars, give or take, is what I'll have in the coon before the fur. Now, that's gonna be kind of hard to tell, but. If you can tell, there's kind of a strip of fat right here that is hard to tell when I'm looking over it. But if the light hits it right, I can see it. That's not a huge concern because that small piece is going to bleed out when you dry it. But I'm going to go ahead and take it off just because I saw it anyway. Oh, Braden, I don't know. I One thing I've learned, do not get in a hurry with this because if you get in a hurry, that's when you put holes in it. And market like this isn't so bad, you know, take a six, five, six dollar coon, make it a, a two dollar coon. But on a good year, you know, that twenty dollar coon can quickly become a five dollar coon when you put a hole in the wrong spot. Uh, Blakely's, no, I can skin a little faster than I can flushing uh, if I had to guess. Okay, here's a good one that's not greasy. This is what I like. Now, if this works right, he's got some good bite marks in his back. If this works right, you'll be able to see how this, there's almost no grease, and the fat just like fillets off. Um, that ideally is the right temperature that I want, because then there's no grease, there's no nasty mess, Now I gotta be careful using the sharp side right here because of those holes in it. If I hit those holes wrong, it's already wanting to dig under and rip that hole out bigger. So I kinda have to be gentle around it. Be real precise cuts and get around it. Same thing with the other, well it looks like a couple of them. But I can probably switch to the dull side on one okay now that see all that fat's just solid I mean there's no no real grease to it that's what I like and then you're not having these slime balls that you're having to clean later
Uh oh, see, I started to cut the tail up though. Um, so here's what I've learned too. If you start to cut the tail off and you still want to keep it, kind of cut down along the side of the tail and make it straight again with no big flap there. And that'll help you out a lot. Uh, Huntley, I'm doing, I don't know, I got probably eight more. I'm going to, uh, probably after this one, I'll put my camera at a different angle so you can see it from the side of what I'm doing. So you can see the angles and stuff. Um, kind of my plan. And then after that, I got a camera angle all set up to uh, flush them and everything. Braden, awesome. Glad you want to get into coon trapping. That's great. Uh, I'll tell you what, bud. Um, message me, iowatrapper2 at gmail.com. Um, I'd love to talk to you a little bit more about this. <laughs> Anthony, something like that. Huh, that's interesting, Tracy. I never thought of that. I've heard of people doing that, but I never knew why. When I do this tail here, I always tend to do the sides of the tail. Um, just kind of a, I don't know, a second nature, I guess, after you've done a few. But then I always leave the center piece, and I'll do the dull side if I can, like I said. And this is a smaller coon, so we can get by with it. But where I cut that tail... Now I can take the knife straight up and down it. I'm not catching on a big flap. And there's not a lot of fat on those tails anyway. So it's not a huge deal. Um, come back up here to the head. Didn't get it quite positioned where I want it. There we go. You really got to be careful not to get your knife too far down the side of the beam. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll show you why. So if I was flushing down the side here and I get too far to the side, that happens. Because you're taking your surface area of your knife from about an inch to about a quarter or an eighth of an inch. Um, and you don't want to do that. You know, work with the big surface and just move your hide around it. And keep in mind, guys, this is what works for me. Uh, if any of you new guys can take anything from it and modify it to fit you and your style, um, awesome. Uh, there's more than one ways to, to flush a coon, I promise you that. Lift that leg up. Get back behind it. Kincaid Outdoors, if I'm pronouncing that right. How we doing, bud? All right, again on the side here. I flipped the knife. I might not have saw that, but I'm just, I'm pretty quick at it, just from kind of second nature after doing a few, but hear that? Do you hear that sound? That's fur binding up. That's me going over. And if you look, I put a hole in it right there. But I want you to know what that sounds like. Um, it's the same way if you hit a nipple. You hear that sound? Almost chances are it's too late. I'll go ahead and put this leg in the top of the beam. I didn't have too much to clean up on them, just a little bit. There's the hole I intentionally made um, to show you how not to get to the side.
All right, now bear with me. I'm gonna attempt to move the camera to station number two, as I'm calling it. Hi guys. too flat I don't even want to share with you guys how I've created these it's kind of a mess okay Austin, how we doing? Oh, cool, man. Welcome to the party. Uh, yeah, we're flushing a bunch of raccoons today. This one's nice, and cold, and uh, thick too, guys. This. So when I came home today, the coon I had thawed out last night, they were really slimy. Um, so I threw them back in the freezer for about an hour, and it looks like they solidified pretty good. So now hopefully this gives you kind of a side angle, um, shows you the, the pitchness of my knife. And see, she's not really wanting to cut in here again, so we're going to sharpen it once again, um, clean it off real quick. One, two, down the back side, and I'll do it a second time. Then I'll do it once or twice over the top. Come back in. Oh yeah, now she's cutting like butter. And kind of see the angle that I'm using. It kind of flattens out once I get going. But at first you kind of have to dive in here pretty pretty steep. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good on there. I'm surprised. Oh, it's terrible down here, Jesse. It's hotter than crap. Oh, shoot, nephew. <laughs> kind of flaying down that back this is a better coon again as far as size goes so uh, the bigger the coon the more gristle the farther you kind of have to flush I um, mean see the arms here normally on a small coon I've already flipped but I went past it a little bit now I did the flip and you can kind of see the angle my knife's at um, fairly flat and we're just pushing it and this is the fat like I want to see come off these things see how solid that is versus slimy that that is uh, that's really what you want and that's why it's important especially if you're starting off to learn how to flush take all the negative factors out of it you know make sure these things are pretty solid uh, if you have a shop fridge work great don't put it in your house fridge your wife will kill you uh, or girlfriend or significant other whatever it may be flush down the tail spin it to the side Use a fish cleaning knife. And do you have a uh, just one beveled side there, Jesse, or do you have like a knife with two? Make the flip and go around the leg. Can't believe we've been going this long already. Feel like I'm slow. Dull side up and over the legs. Push the legs up. Back in behind them. 
this is a pretty good coon. This is a a coon that I would definitely call respectable. Um, so here I'm gonna maybe I don't know if you'll be able to hear this or not. Nope, there was not much of a nipple on that one. That sounded weird saying, but anyway, just I kind of got ahead of myself, got to the belly side before I finished up the the side using the dull side. And remember, I like when that uh, leg rolls up on my knife. It's generally I don't have issues with it binding when that happens for some reason. Just like that, it almost never never binds up. Of course, now I caught caught the corner of it and ripped the leg out a little bit. So instead of ripping it the rest of the way. Just cut it down. Get up behind the leg. Yeah, Judith and Dan, you gotta you gotta get that burr back the uh, the right direction. Um, that's a huge, huge thing. Which crazy too. I didn't know how to sharpen a knife until about three years ago. Uh, a flushing knife, that is. I mean, I just let my old um, neckers get dull and dull and dull, and I could not figure out what how to sharpen them. All right, another one whipped out. Here's another fairly big coon. <laughs> Scab, that's great. Uh, I'm gonna be dead enough once my wife realizes that her iPad's out here in the garage. But I haven't touched it, and I'm not touching skunks today, so it should be all right. And she's at church tonight, so she can't be mad at me, right? That's how that works. All right. That one played nicely. You can almost you can tell the quality of a coon too when you pick it up in your hands when it's skinned. Um, some of these just feel really thin. You can actually just the whole feeling of the hide in general feels thin. Like this has some bulk to it, but uh, this one doesn't. I mean, there's just nothing there versus this one. It's hard to explain. You have to really get a feel for it um, to know what I'm talking about. I'm sure some of you guys do, a lot of you probably do. Um, but for the beginners out there, you'll know when you have a good, good heavy fur coon. Mr. Somebody, uh, sharpening tutorial, there's another video. Uh, you want me to do another video? I've actually got one just on sharpening a flushing knife. Uh, it's a short, short video, but I don't know where it's at by any means. It's on here somewhere. There you go. I hit a burr right there. And now if we can find this thing, I will show you what caused that hole. That is what caused that hole. I mean, that's not that big. It scrunches down nice, but that's all it takes. Something like that, throw a hole in it. And I'd love to say I actually did that one on purpose, but I didn't. <laughs> That one got past me. No scab, I'm filming with my phone, um, but I'm my my iPad is set up up here on my, my table and I'm watching it that way. Exactly, Judith and Dan, exactly. Oh, LTO, thanks for sharing that, bud. Yeah, that's my uh, 
my sharpening video. Ah, I felt another one down here in the bottom. That's why you really got to brush these things out nice, guys. Do you hear that? That sound right there? That's a burr. Oh, man. If I could pull this one out and show you. <laughs> Let me get the hair off this and not lose it. That right there made that sound. That's the size of a BB, pretty much. That's why you got to be really careful with these guys. Um, some of these furs, you know, I know where they come from. Like when I'm brushing them out, you get some of those cockaburs that some of you guys will know what I'm talking about that have probably been in that coon for two or three years. It's just a little ball of mass in there that you cannot get out. Um, and with that, I just have to be really careful. Remember that and go easy over it and I can generally get by. But ultimately, the best case scenario is just get rid of everything. Um, every bird you can. And there's another one. I kind of noticed with that last one, so we're going to take it easy on this bottom flank. Just kind of nice and easy. Not put any pressure on it. Oh, Sawtooth, thanks man. I appreciate you stopping in. Brush up the fur after I wash them. I think the moisture helps remove them. Um, yeah, it definitely can, uh, for sure. I'd be careful if you're flushing and drying them though when they're wet. You really want these furs to be dry um, before you... Ah, there we go. There's a sow. Oh, I took the nipple out. Hear that? That's the nipple that I'm actually starting to rip into. So I'm going to go around it. Use my knife and kind of cut around it. another one so I'll start behind it and break that membrane loose another one you got to be really careful with these this is a sow that definitely had a litter this year um, they're very pronounced nipples uh, from milking so you got to be really careful out the leg, get kind of the belly, around that last row. Okay, now if you see this, that's the start of freezer burn, guys. That's the start of being in the freezer too long. Um, it's not good, but I mean, what do you do? You, you know, you gotta, you gotta finish them. Um, sooner the better most of the time, but you can't always do it as quick as you want. Shame. Yeah. Yeah, you did. Whew. I'll do one more of these and then we're going to board them. I'll do that small one. I was hoping to have kind of a blue coon to show you guys what it looks like, but uh, looks like this one's actually a pretty good one. Sawtooth? Absolutely. Um, hold on just a second.
Oh, well, I thought I'd have one for you, Sawtooth, but it's so warm in my shop, they're drying quicker than they have been. Um, but yes, you'll see like a little patch or a little line of fat left. That is perfectly fine. Um, it will dry out. It'll take a little bit longer to kind of bleed out, but that is perfectly fine. For a little coon, this is a pretty heavy one. He's a little blue. Um, a lot of bite marks on him too. You know, these bite marks and stuff you can't control. Uh, I don't know if you guys have them bad in the rest of the part of the country, but around here they're they're really rough. Uh, Adventure of James, I'm using the caribou. That is my favorite knife. For a beginner, I'd recommend either a caribou or a necker. I don't like a necker. So if you can see this, the caribou, that fits my style because I'm pretty firm and, and and I like that flex. The necker, boy, I haven't used this thing in a long time, it is solid. There is no give to that at all. It's very rigid, and that hurt my arms and my shoulders more um, when I was hammering down. <laughs> Mark, uh, I appreciate it, my friend. Um, definitely not necessarily necessary, but I appreciate it, my man. Always willing to help out as much as I can. Okay, there we go. Um, I got that, that tail again. Boy, I'm really bad at that tonight. Make me look like an idiot. But I'll kind of cut that at an angle. Up and out. Um, and we'll just, we'll try. Um, normally I don't care about the tails at all. Um, matter of fact, half the time if there's any issues with them at all, I just cut them off. Uh, it doesn't affect anything on my, my finished prices. Um, they just get cut off anyway. It's starting to get a little dark outside. On this nice 70 degree day. It's too hot. Way too hot. But we started getting this creeks open up for beavers, so. This is all dual side guys, pretty much letting the knife do the work. Um, like I said, uh, you know, it sounds like uh, Judith and Dan, they're real familiar with fur handling. They can probably verify this. You get used to your knife and your beam, and you learn so much. It's like It's like driving a car. That first time you do it, probably not going to go very well the more you do it the more you have confidence in yourself in the vehicle and, and it just works so much better Ooh, see how that wants to fold up right there that's going to cut it there we go now it's following my coming back on my knife that's going to be all right Oh, you have different beams for different knives? Yeah, that makes sense. Because really, you need a knife that fits your beam. Um, like this works really well for mine. Uh, but this is the only beam I have, and I do everything on it. So I've never really needed a second knife. But uh, one thing I do think, no matter what knife you go with, don't get a cheap junk knife. Um, you will regret it. Uh, you know, that's the, I don't know what they are, like the pro series or something like that you can get three of them for 40 bucks or something you know it's an investment i know but um get yourself a a decent knife and a beam there we go 
there's already a hole in that leg so I have to be really careful because it wants to flip up and get caught Wow, Dan, that's awesome. I might be doing a beaver video too, but I probably won't be. I'm not great at beaver, but I can definitely help someone get started with them. Okay, uh, weeby knives are good too, Mark. Yeah, Scab, um, you, want, you want hardwood for this, for sure. I think this is, hell, I don't even know what it is, to be honest with you. Um, but you want something hardwood, um, that soft stuff. You know, I've even got, I've got some pretty good gouges in it where I've had to use the sharp side down by the tail for something and went right off the tap, the back end and put some gouges and you kind of have to just fix them with your knife, kind of reshape them, uh, to go with the beam. But anyway, guys, we're going to go to, uh, position number three, if I can remember what that was. You'd be, you guys be pretty proud of me. So, uh. <laughs> so here's what my my phone's been in leaning against a chair um <laughs> just a uh, a coyote board so <laughs> it works um took me a few hours last night of figuring out how i was going to do this but i think we got a, a pretty good setup now so or an idea of what i'm doing that's the plan anyway It's kind of difficult to do when you're by yourself. Okay, let's see where we're at here. I think we're going to be pretty close. Let's see, let's throw a test board in. Oh yeah, I think you guys got good angle. Good angle of it. Uh, Flint lock, yeah, the PVC beams I've never messed with, but I've heard they work pretty good. Ah, oh, Judith and Dan, that's a good idea. I never would have thought of that. Hey, Squirrely. All right. So, before I get too carried away here, um, bear with me guys, I'm struggling a little bit by myself. All right, so I'm out of boards right now, so I'm gonna show you how I take one off. Uh, first, always take out the belly board. I'll pull my pins. Now a lot of people wipe their coon down um, throughout the drying process. I do not. 
What I do is I take a rag soaked in mineral spirits at the end of it, and I'll go up and down it with the mineral spirits once, and then I used all my clean rags to put under my wife's iPad. And then I'll go over the top of it once with a dry rag. Um, I generally will go up motion. Any hair, if you see, like it'll want to pull up some of the hair follicles a little bit. Um, but it seems like if you go up motion, it lays everything down. Hey, Chad Campbell, how we doing, bud? Um, the belly side, I generally won't use the uh, mineral spirits on because it's not normally as greasy as the back side. Now, I'll go ahead and take it off the beam or off the board. Now, you got your, your inspection window here, which I'm going to show you how to make in a second. Um, but what I like to do with this, I'm combing this out. So I'm going to comb the entire thing down. I'm going to open it up, comb everything down. I think you can see that. Comb everything down. I'll move it up a little farther here so you can see what I'm doing. Now, all right, that looks okay, you know, whatever. I'll take these side flanks and brush the fur to the middle, just the top of it, just the, the side of the flanks. But for, and this isn't a good coon. This is a, a less than mediocre coon. Um, but it shows those guard hair links. It shows what's going on in here. Um, just kind of cleans it up. You know, you're marketing your product. Uh, I always brush out the tail too. Get all the fur angled out. Um, then I got a measurement here. On my, that's a 2X coon. So it goes on the 2X hanger. So I've got a row of hangers over here that goes five, four, three, two, one. Um, and I, I just, I put every size on each one. When I get to 10, I mark it up here on the board. So like the four X's, I have 20 done. The three X's, I have 60 done right now. Um, then I have a tally of total fur that's off the board that's hanging. Um, now I take the group of 10 and put it on the other wall and it's done until the buyer shows up, which is going to be next month, so that's not good. Alright, so I'm going to grab one of those furs we just did. Sorry, honey, had to decline. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. <sighs> we still good? No harm, no foul, all right? Born 1500, thanks. Uh, not sure if you caught that conversation or not, but what you called a second time, I better answer just in case something happens. You never know. But anyway, Chuck the Coon, we flipped it back, uh, leather side out. I'm going to slide it over the nose of my board with the back facing me. Um, it'll kind of look roughly like that. I don't like that big eyes, those bug me, but anyway, now I'll pull it down here, and I've got all my boards marked with sizes, so I know this is not going to get a 3XL coon, but right there's the line of two, we're really close to it, we can pull it down just a little bit to get to that 2X mark, that's not, that, that is perfectly fine, okay, I snugged it basically is all I did. You get guys that'll sit here and just crank and crank and crank, and then you're gonna have overstretched coon, and it's gonna be a mess. It's not worth it, I promise you. Okay, 
So anyway, I'll take right on the side of the tail, I'll take a pin, and I'll poke it in. We are, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch up from the bottom of the skirt completely. I find my 2X line, poke it in. Do the same thing on the other side. Poke it in. Now I try to keep it balanced from side to side. You want this to look as good as you can. Um, and now I'll just, I'll go over half to three quarters of an inch, poke it in, and I walk it back to the other pin. Poke and walk back. I'm gonna see if I can't get a little better angle. Hold on here, guys. Maybe that's more of a good shot from from behind. Uh, scab, most folks don't realize if you lately stretch it, um, is that barely? I guess where you're trying to get at there. I think that's what you're probably saying. So walk it over again, three quarters of an inch, walk it back. Over again, walk it back. Now I always have what I call, actually I really don't even call them anything. I don't know what you call them, but I'll get these little low spots. Um, it's just off my skinning style. Um, I tend to try to just go across and smoothen them out a little bit um, nothing major but now it just looks straighter my strip my cut looks straighter and I'm constantly grabbing these wings and making sure I'm even you don't want one wing to only go here and one to here because then you're way off way off um, being even so I'll just keep working everything in And again, guys, this is how I do it. I'm not saying this is the only way to do it. There are several methods of flushing, um, stretching. Uh, this is what works for me. I like it. I, I take a lot of pride in it. Um, a lot of guys use wire stretchers, and that's fine too. Uh, I just like this because it, for me, um, it. I just like it. Uh, I guess I can't really say anything else. Hey, C&C, &C, how we doing? Outdoor Mike, what's up, bud? Okay, so I should explain that. I'll take what I kind of call the lip of the tail, which is kind of that wide spot, right where it narrows down, also it'll widen out. I'll take that, and I'm just trying to put two pins in and, and space it evenly. Um, I am a tail pleater. A lot of guys don't necessarily like that. Uh, but all I'm doing is I take the tail. I'll go down here about two inches and push it up and put a pin in. Um, the other side's the same way, except it's already partially pushed up from the other pin. And that's how I do my tails. Uh, it's not, not necessarily the right way or the wrong way. Um, just for me, I think they look better when they're all done and dried. Um, a huge personal preference. That's all it is. You can pull this thing down straight and tack it in or staple it in, whatever you want to do too. Got a little residual fat here. And also guys, this is just a, you can't see it with this camera angle, I'll show you in a little bit. Just a jig I made that holds my board in place. Um, basically just two by fours nailed together with a little bit of a gap for the board to slide in. Um, keeps it right at about my head height, which is where I want it. Uh, really, really works well. This is the one that we cut the a little bit of the leg off with. Um, we caught it a little bit. So it's gonna be a little, little uneven here no matter what we do, but we'll make it work. Okay, now, I don't know if I can straighten that out or not, but um, 
this is kind of what we, we got right now what it looks like uh, technically we could be done but what I'm gonna do is I've got that one-handed scraper uh, that you saw me cleaning all that fat up with I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna go all the way down this hide on the front and back side you can see the fat that this thing is taking off It's just taking that excess grease and fat and everything off of this and I'm going to do it on both sides. Up and down. I mean you can even see the marks that it's leaving where it's pushing the grease to the side. It doesn't have to be perfect but this I think helps it dry a lot quicker for me. Now what I want to show you. See how these sides go up? If you were to take this to fur harvesters that would be below a 2XL coon because any part of this gets below a 2X, any part gets below a 2X, it's automatically to the next to the next lowest size. So almost every time I'll take a pin and I'm gonna put it on both sides to hold it down. Because as this thing dries, it's gonna try to shrink. So if you don't hold those down, it's really gonna shrink a lot. Okay, let me try something here. Maybe this is a little better. Be able to see the whole thing. Hey, CT Trapper Man, how we doing, bud? Ah, uh, Justin's in here? When did Justin get in here? Ah, oh, shoot. Sorry, man, I missed you. I'm trying to work here. Believe it or not. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do, since I brushed that down... Right here, I'm going to grab the top of the inside, and I'm not going to go very high. You can see the row of nipples here. I'm barely going to make this cut. Now, what I want you to see, see what this, this skirt line looks like on the inspection window. This is called an inspection window. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. This is where your buyer or any fur company is going to look at to see the, the section of your fur, the color of your fur. Um basically everything but the primeness so you see what that looks like now I'm just gonna come in here and cut off the nasty stuff the stuff that's covered in grease clean it up a little bit I'll come down and get some of this freezer burn off the other legs now that to me looks a whole lot better and I'm gonna do the same thing with the legs here if I can hold it here I'll show you my jig was too high for you to see it. All I'm doing is cleaning these legs up. That's all I'm doing. Remember, you're marketing a product. And this lip, you want you do not want an excess lip on here. Um, any Wherever leather touches leather will rot. So you want to make sure you cut that off. And there it is. That is your finished product. Um, it's not perfect, but it's a fair coon. Uh, I'll take that any day. You know, it's a 2X, which ain't great, but I prefer a 3. Um, everyone, a lot of people worry about these heads. I don't. Um, I do. My skinner, the way he skins, he'll leave a little bit of a burr here. Um, and I always cut that off. That's all right. Uh, not a big deal. Michael Grant, how we doing, bud? Oh, good, Justin. Uh, Adventure with James, not very high. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll get a bore here in a second and then I'll, I'll show you, but I'm going to go hang this here in a little bit. I'll show you my, my hanging setup. Uh, boy, I need a new area to hang. We 
got to take another one off boards. I guess I had one over here already. But, um, this is not a pretty coon either. This is kind of a, a rough one. Hey, thanks, Steve. I appreciate it, man. Uh, you know, I came out here and I put this little my little stations together last night for about an hour. Uh, tried to figure out how I was going to do this tonight without my wife and kids here to help me. Uh, but it's, it's doing all right. Um, just trying to give you guys a little insight of, of how it works and how I do it. Um, kind of a, a beginner's basic, but also, you know, kind of my fluency if I have one at all. Wipe it down with the mineral spirits rag. Find my other rag that's not under the camera. Oh yes, it's under the the jig for the phone. So I need to find another clean rag. Now some of you might have seen posts that I've made of these pretty nice white coon and everything. That's not always the case. This coon here, it's rough, it's a slate, it's got bites on it. There's nothing I could do to improve the quality of this coon. This is not me. This is just, it's a coon in the wild. It has flaws. Um, very few are what I'd call good coon. Go ahead and pull my pins on the belly side. Wipe it down. Now remember, I'm cleaning up the inspection window. Right now, that looks like a wadded up, dirty mess. And it's not a good coon either. I should have found a good coon to remove from, but... Does that look good? No, but it's better than what it was. Um, you can't you can't turn a, a five dollar coon into a twenty dollar coon, but if there was such a thing as a twenty dollar coon right now, you could quickly turn it into a five dollar. Um, you know, I take a lot of pride in finishing these coon, and a lot of people laugh at me for it because it's it's pointless. But we got another two XL. Put them on the two X hook. Okay, let's do that big boy now. Let's get him put up. Then I might call it a night here. Uh, Mike, those black spots, those are like tick bites, um, flea bites. Uh, it's just nothing you can really do about it. Uh, Justin, I'm right below it. I'll show you here in a second. Yeah, LTO, they're expensive. They have their place, um, for sure, but uh, I still prefer my square jaws. Outdoor Mark, thanks for stopping in, bud. Yeah, PA trapping outdoors. Let's find that big boy in here. That's a big coon. That's a big one. We'll get him boarded up and, uh, yeah. If he's not a five, I'll be pretty surprised. But it takes a lot bigger coon to hit a 5XL than most people think. Uh, it's not just they don't grow on trees, but you can see my 5X line. Oh, yeah, he hit it. Um, barely, but he did hit it. Uh, pretty good coon, not too bit up. There's a few bites in here. Um, but yeah, this is, overall, this is a really good coon. He's yellow, though. If you can see that yellow, that means he's a color four, 
which is the least desirable color. So, go figure. Have a big coon that is going to get docked for color pretty bad. But On that 5X line, both sides of the tails. Now, see how that's bunched up? That doesn't bother me. That makes it look full, makes it look thick. It's going to take a little bit to dry, but it doesn't bother me. I'll let it dry. Here's those little wings that I talk about that come down. Um, we'll go ahead and, and cut, cut those out, probably now. And I just want to square them up is all I'm doing. I'm not taking big chunks out, but I'm making it look a little straighter. You know, I can take these now and, and, and straighten it out, but we're going to take some pretty good bites out of this leather to, uh, to bring them in. I should put these up here, that way it's not right in the way. But all I'm doing guys, taking chunks of, you know, making sure I stay square, which I'm getting a little bit bigger bite on the left side, I think. Trying to make sure everything's square. You see this side seems a little longer, um, so I'll take a little less bite out of this and a little bit bigger bite out of this side. Now I almost went the other way on that. But this is a nice, nice 5XL coon. Um, color or not, it's a good coon. Spread the tail out, like I said. I'm not even going to be able to finish this tail on this side right now until I get the other side cleaned up. I think we need a better angle yet on this. That might be even better. I'm gonna go ahead and scrape some of the fat off this side while I'm back here. I gotta come back and finish this tail. Uh, one flaw in my jig, if I finish this out, the board touches my table on the back side. So I'll have to flip it over and then come back to it. Shoot, I probably missed a lot here. I've been rambling. Uh, PA trapping, actually I don't think it was, but a lot of the times here in Iowa, uh, a lake coon does have a lot more yellow on it. I'm going to flip him around, you can see my big legs. That's a big coon, guys. That's This might have been one of those, uh, oh... What were they? 20. I had a 30 and a 28, I think, that one day. I, I could be wrong on that, but I think that's what I was at. Alright, now once again, taking my one handed scraper. See, it's fairly clean on there. And you just scrape that excess fat, man, you can just see it flying off of there. Just get that slime off. That helps these things dry so much. Um, you can see the the sheath there. I'll go ahead and clean this up on a bore. Um, there's a lot of fatty tissues around it. Um, okay, you can see the legs. I'll go ahead and cut the legs. The length I like them because, like I said, leather touches leather. It's gonna rot. You have to clean that up. Get those cleaned up. Now I'm going to come down here, and I'm not going very far at all. See, so a testicles, sheath, um, normally that gap is only probably about six inches, but on this one, it's probably eight to nine. I'm just going to go right in here and cut it and walk it all the way down and get the bottom of those legs where a little freezer burn is showing. Walk it down the other side, 
blow my pins again, and there we go. There's my window. Uh, this is how I like to do it. It takes a little bit for me to kind of fine tune it, but but I like it. Also, get pins on the side here. Make sure it doesn't go above a five. Uh, most fur houses, well, the only fur house left for harvesters, but a lot of the time they're going to go ahead and and mark it as a, a like. Well, I guess 5Xs are a little different, but a lot of people combine the 3s and 4s. Um, you know, you got the, the lip here that we're going to take off again. I'll run my knife down the side and kind of fillet, get some of that cheek out of there too. If These big coon have a lot of fatty cheeks. Um, then I come up the other side and do the same thing. And there we go. That's it. Now, this big boy. Oh, I got to do the tail yet. Yes, the tail on the back side. Ooh, I'm glad I turned that around. I'm gonna clean it up a little more because there's a lot of grease on that sucker. Man, these are big coon. I don't get a lot of fives every year. Uh, I think last year I had 15 or 13 5XL coon. Uh, you know, it's we got good coon here, but you know, up north they got the the, the size. Um, a good buddy of mine up in northwestern Iowa. I mean, his smallest coon is probably a 3XL. Uh, we just don't quite have the size those northern Iowa boys do. Um, but we got a, a good coon. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, they have a heavier coon, too. Um, a lot of them at auction would go uh, northerns or heavies. Depends on how you want to look at it. Ours would go north central for the most part. But Anyway, there it is, guys. There's a tail pleat. Um, a big coon. That's how I put it up. So... Did I put a belly board in my last one? I don't remember doing that. No, I did not. Wow. Nobody called me out on that? Nobody. Sawtooth? Yeah, check it out. That This little scraper is awesome. I mean, you can see even some grease up here. You can just scrape most of it off, and, and it works awesome. It works great. Uh, Judith and Dan, I really don't. Everything I use is the same size for the most part. And I just go all the way up. I'm going to put this one up. Alright, I need a belly wedge for another one now. Because nobody called me out on it. Come on, guys. Some of you guys are professionals. That's about all the uh, informational stuff I have for you. Um, I'm going to put up the rest of the coon here a little later. but Yeah, you can see, see everything I got hanging back here, guys. Uh, if I can make it back here without falling. I mean, I've got rows of coon hanging on boards yet. And back here is what I'm talking about where they're all unhooked. Sorry, I didn't turn the light on back here, guys. Um, but these are the groups of 10. This is all the finished fur. Uh, I, I take a lot of pride in my put-up, guys. You got to watch your head around here. You'll take your head clean off. But You know it. You're marketing your fur, guys. You've got to take pride in it. You have to. Hey, thanks, Gab. Appreciate it. Where do we miss here? Um, so the boards I'm using, guys, are, are made by a gentleman in northern Iowa. His name is Scott Webb. Um, him and his wife have a basically a little sawmill um, that they use. And he's currently not making any more coon boards. Um, temporarily, I'm hoping because of the lack of basswood, which these are made out of. So, I'm hoping he gets more in stock. He's willing to make more. 
I've had a lot of people reach out, ask me where I get them, who they're from. That's his name, but I'm not going to give his number out until he's ready to start making more stuff. So. Hold on, scab. Now, now you got me intrigued because I still have it on the board over here. I'm just kidding you, scab. I didn't even catch him. Any. But you had to be like that, didn't you? You just had to be like that. That's all right, PA trap. You're not missing much now. I'm just shooting the bull. Hey, Edward. Oh, shoot, man. Um, sorry, you kind of missed the, the grand scheme of things. You know, I, I'm really hoping that this is a live that people can go back and, and learn something from as far as people learning to trap and, and get into fur handling. Uh, that's kind of the reason I put this on was to help people learn fur handling, the aspects of it. Um, man, LTO, the weasel too. Man, you guys are brutal. Yeah, I know, Scab. I know. Yeah, CT Trapper, man. Absolutely. Um, you can use, you want a soft wood for sure. Good for sure. You, you want a soft wood. Um, I'm not, I'm pretty handy with wood. Uh, well, of course I am, but, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a good, you know, I can't make those beveled edges like my boards have. Um, and I'm just, I'm just not great with it. Oh, PA trapping. Don't ever say that. Don't ever say that. We're, we're in different worlds as far as coon population, man. I had one guy on my last live ask me, you know, so are you that good of a trapper or are the coon just that easy? And it's like, well, I can't really brag myself up because the coon really are just that easy here. So, boy, you guys, I'm going to stop doing this stuff. You guys take all my comments out of context and man hey steve from wyoming uh we just got done finishing up some fur um it was fun it was, it was fun i hope hope some of you guys uh enjoyed it um that's how i put them up you know i'll do i i don't get crazy with it guys if i put up like so i have mondays fridays and saturdays off well mondays and saturdays right now so Saturday, strictly family, hang out inside with the kids, do whatever with the wife, um, whatnot. Mondays, I'll put up 50 to 60 coon, uh, and then pretty much every night I try to shoot for like 10 to 15. Um, it takes a long time to get all these done. Uh, I'm definitely way behind last year, especially with beaver season starting up, but um, I take a lot of pride in it too, which is probably one of the reasons I'm behind. If I quite frankly just didn't give a shit i'd probably move a lot quicker but i don't know there's something about looking at a, a beautiful nice prime 3xl coon that just i take pride in that i did that you know it makes me happy oh jeff absolutely location 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 for sure yeah jesse that's probably all it is but i i'm not I've never used one. Um, I'm more of a framing, siding, roofing type guy. I'm not more of the, the finishing guy. So, Jeremy, thank you. That that right there made the whole night worth it right there. If you pick something up from that and you can use it on your line to finish your fur, that's all. I, that's all. The whole reason I did this. So, thank you. That makes my whole night a success right there. Oh, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's, you get what you put into it to an extent, you know, the, the furs are cheap right now, but at the same time you go in there with complete junk, you're going to get absolutely nothing. And I have a lot of guys that, you know, even tonight comment all that work for a two or three dollar coon. It's not that bad. I mean, it's bad. It's really bad, but you know, I'm looking at averaging probably between five and seven is my guess. Uh, it's bad. 
But when it's something you love doing, because I love catching coon, I love finishing coon, I take a lot of pride in my finished product. If you can make money doing something you love, why wouldn't you? Um, just my opinion, you know. If trapping had zero profit, I still trap. Not at the, the level I do, but I still trap because I love trapping. If I could sell these things for $2 a piece, I still put up fur because I love putting up fur. I wouldn't do it to the level I am, but I, I love doing it. Oh, no, LTO. I'm still doing a Friday Night Live. I just, I want to do a little over-the-shoulder view of what I'm doing. Uh, tell me what your guys' thoughts were. The angles, fairly decent, what you wanted. Because I want to see what it looked like from the top as I'm flushing or, or from the side. Uh, I, I tried, I guess. Being here solo, it's just I threw something together and I hope it worked. Yeah, PA trapping. I'm happy with that number. I mean, that's, you know, I hear guys, oh, I can do 150 in a day. Uh, not a chance. There's no way I could. Um, but, you know, I maybe it's just I, I'm too slow because I take pride in it. Thanks, Larry. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, Judith and Dan, I bet, down south. LTO. I'm going to kick you off my page. <laughs> oh, that's so mean. Yeah, Justin Justin probably doesn't have that big a coon either there. Um, you know what's funny is some people take offense to that. And I've never understood that. So, what the heck was I on? I don't know if I was on Facebook or something else. Um... Some guy, I think he sold his coon. It was like 75 cents a piece or something. And he was pretty upset. And I said, yeah, I understand that. Um, you know, you're not in a very great area for coon. I think he was in Louisiana or something like that. What was that? It's probably been a month ago. But anyway, he took offense. Why are our coon worse than yours? I was like, I'm not trying to start an argument. I'm just saying, you know, the farther north you go, generally the better the coon are. And the guy got... I mean, straight up pissed at me. I mean, it was, he started messaging me privately saying, you know, you must think your coon are better than ours. And it's like, I'm not going to say they are, but they are. You know, it's just, it's a geographical thing. Um, it, it's, people take offense to that. And it's, it's not what it's meant to be. Really boring, 1500? anybody else have uh, issues with the quality of the footage right now? Oh yeah, Mark, absolutely, a hundred percent. You know what I'm what I'm showing you guys is to get people started. Okay, I nobody showed me anything. I watched videos. Um, because I started doing this before YouTube was around. I watched videos, I watched demos at conventions, and I started, and for three years straight, pretty much I destroyed like 15, 20 coon. I said, I'm done. Screw this, I'm done. Then finally one year I stuck with it, got to about 30 coon. I'm like, all right, this is getting better. And I've been doing it now for, what have I been doing it? 11 years now I've been finishing fur. Um, and I love doing it. But yeah, everybody pick up something that works for you and modify it to fit you. And that's my whole series is find something that I'm doing that you might like or want to try and modify it to fit you. Because I promise you what I'm doing is not going to be exactly what works for you probably in a different part of the country. Um, you know, look at uh, Justin or um, Dan down there, they probably completely different coon trapping methods than me, 100% different. You know, it's just, it's all about region, guys. Hey, thanks, Kenneth, I really appreciate it, man. LTO, I'm hoping to, I got big plans for next year if they develop.
Your best coon paid 4%. 4XL, most others for $3. Oh, probably $4. Ooh, that's rough, PA. That's rough. No, okay, I see you correct yourself here. Yeah, Sawtooth, and that's the thing, you know, it's... Let's see if I can't find something here that's that's worthy of it. You know, I'm not saying all these coon are great, because they're not, but there's some good ones in there, and I take a lot of pride in that. You know, like I said, you can quickly turn a $20 coon, if there was such a thing, into a $5 coon, but you cannot turn a $5 coon into a 20 bottom line. And... It's just, that's just how it is. Nothing happened. Man down. We're good. We're good now. My, my, my jig collapsed in my chair. So I'm glad it's, it, it it's not in use anymore, but. Uh, Jeff, do I still have? Yes, I've got. Oh, what do I have left? 400 probably coon in the basement right now, um, give or take. Uh, not 100 percent sure what's there. Four something, maybe five something, um, but a little bit left. Flintlock, I hope you're right, buddy. I hope you're right. LTOS, some warm weather, buddy. Uh, Logan, I'm using the uh, Caribou. Um, I love this knife uh, Someone brought it up earlier about your handles slipping out of your hands. No, because they're at a different, you know They're more rectangular than circular like the Neckers um, The Neckers work for a lot of people though. Um, so don't discount the Necker uh, but the the caribou is more flexible and the Necker is more rigid um, If I had to select a starter knife for anybody it would probably be one of those two knives um, for sure Yeah, Edward. It's kind of where I was going with that. Yeah, PA. Um, I think, though, in Montana, it was more of a novelty sale. Uh, you know, Montana is not exactly known for raccoons. I can't think of the quantity they had there, but it wasn't a whole lot. Um, like the Idaho sale. Uh, generally does better with coon than anywhere else, but at the same time, they don't have a lot of coon. You know, if they have 150 coon, some of those novelty guys, like, I'd love to tan 30 or 40 coon. They're going to pay a little bit more than, than the guys sending them overseas, so. Yeah, Judith and Dan. And that's that's one thing that uh, um, I will have an issue with. The, the first from last year, they have yellowed a little bit. You know, they are, I won't call them completely stale, but they are slightly stale. Uh my my main buyer he's not too concerned about it you know it might might take a little bit off but at the same time a lot of these big fur buyers they're going to be sitting on you know if they can't move coon to china right now they're going to be sitting on 10 20 30 50 70 thousand coon for three years that you know they're going to turn stale too pretty much no matter what you do it sounds like ltl <laughs> i might have to try that Uh, Jesse, I don't know. Um, I won't go into politics on this, but all I'm going to say, and I'll leave it at this, not discuss it anymore, is it's a bunch of bullshit. That's all it is. I don't believe half of our social media. I've got some really, really good friends at work that are Ukraine, um, and they said there's nothing going on over there. So I'm not going to discuss it anymore, though. That's I'm going to leave politics out of this. It's just trapping and fur handling and, and having a good time. Hey, Mark, um, try it. Uh, what do you have right now? I'm curious, what, what are you using right now? Okay, Jeff, um, if someone minds helping Jeff out here, I've got that chan that video on sharpening that knife. Uh, if someone could share that link for him, that'd be awesome. 
Um, I do sharpen them. Uh, it's different than what you do with anything else. I'll even try to do it real quick. I took my gloves off, which sucks, but. So this is crazy, and this blows a lot of people away. So I've got my beveled side over here, my flat side over here, right? I'm going straight on top of the knife. Going straight down twice. Once along the back non-beveled side. And then once over the top again. Basically, as uh, Dan described, they've got a little burr here. And that burr, it has a slight curve to it. And that's what digs underneath the flesh. Um, so your, your standard sharpeners will not work for that. Oh, Dan's got it. He pulled it up. Perfect. LTO's got it. Awesome. Uh, Flintlock 25. Yeah, Funkies has them. Um, as you all know, I'm a big supporter of Funkies. Um, first off, he's a great person, great friend of mine over the years from the trapping conventions. But uh, the amount he supports trapping to get our youth involved is insane. He has donated so much money energy and equipment to our youth to donate free traps to kids to get them involved that is huge to me and that that stands that's way above f and t um or any any company in my eyes um his his willingness to uh to do all that for us so um he has my 100 percent support in, in every aspect LTO, your beaver trapping videos up? That's awesome, bud. Yeah, Mark, and that's, you know, what, the crazy thing about Alan at Funkies. So I met him and his wife years ago at our state Iowa convention. And I probably shouldn't even admit this, but uh, that'd been seven, eight years ago, probably give or take, maybe nine now. Anyway, I showed up at the convention the next year and his wife came up to me and asked how Noah, which is my son, was. Because she remembered me. She remembered talking to me. She cared about talking to me. They really, they're not out there, hey, how can I make a quick, you know, 20 mm -hmm. bucks off somebody. They're there, they care about trapping. They care about people. And, and that's huge. Um, you know, if you guys go to the NTA or the... The ITA, I don't know what else he goes to. Probably the FTA, too. Um, go up to Funkies. Talk to Alan, the the tall guy with the slightly gray goatee and the glasses, and and, and talk to him. He will talk trapping for hours with anybody. Uh, just a great, great person. And that's and his wife's a sweetheart. She's a doll. She talks to me about the kids. Um, when my kids did come to a convention with me one time, which was interesting, she was just force feeding them candy. I mean, <laughs> but they're just, they're good people and they're real people, not just out there trying to make a quick buck off the, off of trappers. Uh, Ethan, oh, 1,052 is what I caught. There's going to be a few that I'll end up tossing because, you know, it gets too warm and something slips or they're too small or too covered in burrs or some issues. So if I say roughly a thousand, you know, probably seven grand gross off of the fur, uh, but that's not my profit. My profit's off of all the parts and pieces off these things. Um, that's definitely where my money's at right now. So hold on a second guys, I'll be right back. Hillbilly hipster, how we doing, buddy? Um, tips or tricks from mending tears from flushing. 
Um, are you talking just coon? Uh, if so, just pin them shut. Um, I don't think I've done any recently that have holes in them. Uh, but if you tear it out like a flap, like it's torn out and there's nothing missing, just pin it up. Um, if you're doing a, a fur out like coyote, I suggest when it's still, before you flush it, go ahead and sew it shut. Um, from the inside, sew it shut so you don't get all the hair stuck in it. Um, that's just, just my thoughts on it. Oh yeah, Mark, absolutely. Good. I'm glad you got to meet him. Yeah, Justin, right? <laughs> oh, this isn't my good hoodie. No, not by any means. No, this thing is, uh, whew. this is, this has, uh, flushing and coon grease all over it. <laughs> It is hot in here though. I'm glad I took it off. Oh, shoes. Um I mean, she'll find out. Actually, I don't know. We're two hours into this. She won't watch it that long. She'll be bored. Might be a little upset about her iPad being out here, but. Um, LTO, they're 25. Uh, since you're a young man, I might not have one in your size, but I do need to make another order before the uh, national convention, so. Um, Maybe I'll uh, I'll get a size ordered and I'll ship you up one. Yeah, Edward, no doubt. I used to actually flesh without using or skin without using gloves, and my hands were like waterproof. It was crazy. Uh, flintlock. I'm in a very tough spot with that right now, man. Um, so I've been doing some scouting the last couple days. Our cricks are open right now. By Friday, they're going to be open 100%. Saturday, talking for some serious rain. Uh, and I wanted to wait a week after they opened the set. So my plan was a week from this Friday, which is looking at a high of about 30 and a low of about 15. And it stays that way for like the next week. So I'm really in an awkward spot of, I got a few spots close to home. I might set this coming Friday or Saturday uh, just, to, just to have some fun and scratch the itch. But my big line that I want to run, I don't want to set out and have it iced up and frozen in, uh, especially with running TS-85s and drowners. They catch a lot of current. And as some of you probably know, that, that current can really fluctuate some water and move some some silt uh, and I don't want something coming up missing or underneath three foot of silt either so uh, we'll see we'll see what I end up doing no oh, thanks mark for sharing that I <laughs> just hide the towels <laughs> Uh, LTO, that's why I figured you wanted a medium, and I don't. So so when I ordered my trapping apparel last year, I assumed most trappers were medium to slightly overweight. <laughs> Average to slightly overweight. So most of my stuff was XL and 2XL, uh, considering I'm an XL. And turns out I should have ordered a lot more medium and larges, uh, because I pretty much sold out of them right away. So... Uh, LTO, I'll tell you what, bud. You message me at Iowa Trapper 2 at Gmail. Um, my next order, I'll get one sent up to you, bud. <laughs> Thanks, Gab. I appreciate it. 
They also got shots to take care of it if it's bad enough. Yeah, Jesse, I don't do it anymore either. Oh, yeah, Sawtooth, you're a ways out yet. You're a ways out yet. Uh, Justin, I don't know about hoodies, but I think I do have a 4XL shirt, a green one just like this. Um, I think it's a darker green, but I do have one. Yeah, PA trapping. That I'm just, it's hard to believe that I trap fairly respectable numbers for being as overweight as I am. I blame a lot of that as me working in negative 20 because I'm constantly like in winter mood. I No joke, I consume probably 8,000 calories a day. Um, no joke. I, it's literally, I eat like crazy. But when you work 10 hours in negative 20 freezer, you need some of them, but not all of them. So I, it's just, it's killing me. Yeah, Mark. Um, I may have to do that, bud. I, I forgot to message you back about that. Uh, yeah, well, I'm just trying to figure out when I'm going to be trapping. That's my thing. Like, I, I don't know when that's going to be. Originally, I thought I'd be almost done with my beaver route right now, the way the, the weather was looking, but I haven't even started yet. So, I don't know. I just, I don't know. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Oh, shoot. That's funny. Yeah, I, I have fun with this. Uh, you know, I I love being on here and being social with people. Um, you know, talking trapping with people. It's so much fun. You know, when I was when I was flushing here earlier, I was watching you guys all talk amongst yourselves in the chat and, and communicate and pick each other's brains. And it's like, I'm so glad I'm able to be here so you guys can make that connection and learn from each other. Uh, I've picked up probably more from you guys in the chat than any of my videos have taught anybody. Um, and I love that. We've, we've got to connect with people. we got to become a web of communication. And honestly, YouTube's about it. That's what it is. Scab, I just look at it as I beat anorexia. and I'm pretty proud of it. Yeah, PA trapping, I get it. Yeah, LTO, weather sucks. Oh, yeah, Jeff. Um, I was checking my cricks today. I should have filmed some of it. Most of my water systems are 50% open or more. Um, if the crick is 20 foot wide, you've got 8 to 10 foot of running water down the middle of it wide open. Um, it, it's moving. It's moving pretty good. Hey, Jinx, how we doing, buddy? Uh, you missed a, a good flushing, well, I don't know if it was good or not, but you missed a good uh, flushing boarding demo kind of deal. Glad you made it to the party, bud. We only, what did we flush? I think I flushed eight of them and boarded two of them. Uh, I'll board the rest of them. The wife and kids will be home here before too long, and then I'll get off here and get my daughter to bed, help my wife with some of her homework, and then I'll come back out here and finish everything. So, uh, PA trapping, I would agree with you, but right now, um, it's so like the water is running probably six, eight inches underneath the ice. Like the ice is so. The ice ledges are here, and the actual water's down here running. So, um, early season, I would agree with you. When you get that first skim ice or, or half inch ice, perfect, especially for muskrats. Uh, but for how I'm beaver trapping, none of my beaver are local beaver because I'm trapping road ditches, guys. So, I have that 33 feet. Um, most of my spots don't have a dam under the, under the bridge or anything like that. Most of them have stuff way off that they're traveling beavers, what I'm catching. So it's a little more difficult. Oh, yeah. I'll bet, Dan. I'll bet.
Um, CJ, I'm not going to give too much away, but, uh, oh, heck, I can't say that because with this next statement, but I'm hoping in two to four years, you're going to see an Iowa Trapper fur line come out in the U.S. Uh, if everything works out right, I'm going to have my own hats, gloves, mittens, um, at least to start with, so. But it's going to be a little bit yet. I'm still working out the the works of it. Um, I got a lot of stuff to learn about it because I'll be, this is going to be something I do myself in-house. So uh, it'd be pretty cool. It'd be pretty cool. But we'll see. Might be my, my gateway out of my seven to five job. Um, but who knows? <laughs> the possum G-string. No ice in Virginia. That's crazy. Oh, we got plenty of ice. There's some ponds. There's people still ice fishing just the other day. Uh, that's just crazy. Scab, I hope I got a few got you a few subs the other day, bud. Oh yeah, we did. I forgot about that, Dan. Uh, yeah, I've uh, generally during these lives, by the end of it, I, I struggle to remember a few things, but. Hi, Mama Cat. That's what happens when you leave the shop door open, the cats come in, clean up some of the fat that gets on the floor, though, that's all right. Oh, I gotta show you guys something. While I'm thinking about it before I get off here. We still got some coon to finish, boys. Like a lot. And that's just the walk-in. I've got four chest freezers with fur, I think. Three or four left. So, we've got some work to do. Yeah, just and that's the problem. It's I won't say it's a problem, but I, I try to put my family first, which sometimes I struggle with. But uh, you come home and you got all these coon to finish, but yet your daughter wants to work on her alphabet, and it's like, or she needs to work on her alphabet. She doesn't want to. So, hey Joshua, how we doing, bud? Hey Sawtooth. Um, don't be afraid to chime in on normal Friday night, man. I appreciate you stopping in. Uh, please chat. Uh, I like hearing from you, man. That's awesome. I didn't know you're a, another Iowa guy. So thank you for stopping in, but I appreciate it. Yeah, Caden, I think we hit 70 here today. Tomorrow is 40. Uh, but like in a week from now, we're going to have lows in the teens again. So I don't know. It's just a mess. It's really messing up my beaver season. And I'm not I, I, I'm not a professional beaver trapper by any means. The spring season is very new to me. Um, when I first started doing this, we run until April 15th. I started trapping like April 2nd. The water opened up. I found a bunch of dams on private ground. Last year, I started trapping the public, road right of ways. And I learned a lot about if you have water ankle deep, you're going to have beaver running up it. Um, but then I started trapping like March 20th. And now we're the first of March basically. And I don't know what to do because it's too early for the beavers to move. Are they going to be kicking those two-year-olds out now? Are they going to wait until the 20th? It's a whole new ball game for me. Yeah, scab. No, I, I can't do that. My, my five-year-old would hate me. My fifteen-year-old would hate me worse. Uh, it's yeah. This, this stuff isn't for him. He, he's a very good kid, very smart kid, but we don't share the same passions. Um, and I can, 
I can force work ethic and I can still, you know, a drive, but you can't force somebody to love what you do as far as passions go. So, um, but that's all right. You know, I'm, I, I'm not upset about it. He's a very, very smart kid and he's going to go some serious places in his life, but he just doesn't, doesn't have what I do as far as the, the love for, for trapping or hunting and stuff, which is completely fine. You know, it's, he'll find his own passions and things that he cares about like I do. And as long as, I told him, as long as you find something that you love to do and put work and effort into it, as far as a passion, that's all I ask. I don't care what it is. No, oh, no, 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 no. I don't hold it against you, bud. We can't even trap up there, and you can't come down here. I can't very figure out is that your guys did you guys start that whole thing where iowa's couldn't iowans couldn't come up there or did iowa start it where minnesotans couldn't come down here minnesotians minnesotans um couldn't come down here i was wondering the same thing scab yeah i figured caden Oh, cool, Joshua. That's awesome, man. Uh, Justin, for here, it doesn't matter if they're prime or not. Uh, basically, a summer beaver is going to pay the same thing as a winter beaver because it all goes to the hatter market. Um, it's just basically they shear it all down and, and make hatters out of it. So nothing, nothing really good or bad about it, I guess. That's awesome, LTO. I wish you luck, buddy. I wish you luck. Really? Wow. So we're probably not too far behind you then, bud. Um, Dan, we're not too far behind you. Ottercats here. Awesome. All right, we're going to call it a night, guys. I'm just kidding. Not yet, but we're close. <laughs> LTO, I'm going to kick you off this channel. He, uh. Ah, PA trapping, yes. Late season, the casters are better for sure. Is it? Okay, I didn't know if it was. Um, and that's another thing. I asked somebody else about that. Like, yeah, we're not allowed to trap up there in Minnesota because I had another Minnesota guy message me. And he goes, well, it's not our effing fault. It's Iowa did this. I'm like, whoa. I'm not, not even discussing what happened. I don't. I didn't know if it was Minnesota legislation or Iowa legislation. I just know those two states cannot interstate trappers. Um, it's kind of ridiculous, though. Whatever it is, uh, certain states don't allow trapping from non-residents. So those states that can't go there don't allow their non-residents, and it's just it's kind of a mess. It's just a big mess. All right, Otter Cat, you pulled after five minks, so there's the rule of five for guys. So really, you only had one mink. Oh, shoot, I had to. Uh, Jesse, I have a 28 by 50. Um, it's going to get added on to... Oh, heck, actually, here, I'll show you my... Ooh. So this is my, my setup here. So I've got 5X Coon four my three which is empty and then two one and i have a large medium and as soon as i get 10 on these they go on those hanging hooks which are way back there um and then that's how i kind of keep track of my my size throughout the season really ltl maybe it is a minnesota thing then like uh, sawtooth said nice justin how are you guys' mink look down there are they pretty good or you know i know the southern stuff some of them struggle so i didn't know if if the mink were the same or not <laughs> hey pa trapping i'll tell you what you come to my neck of the woods there's no flat land there is hills everywhere and honestly, that is why I'm able to catch numbers in Southern Iowa. Uh, 
you go to northern Iowa, those guys, I will say a guy that catches 100 coon in northern Iowa has far more talent than I have down here in southern Iowa. Far more talent. Because there are a flat, there's no timber, there's no nothing. Down here, we've got a hill every 200 yards with a draw of timber coming up to corn on the other side. Um, that, that's why I'm able to catch some fairly decent numbers is because of my location, 100%. The Mink Wars, Joshua. Yeah, Scab. Um, I keep my beaver, when I sell my beaver, it's sold by the pound, you know, 100% um, by the pound. So that's the only thing I keep track of as far as weight goes. Oh, getting scrapped. Yeah, our mink are, are pretty torn up probably by now, I'm sure. Yeah, just or Dan, I'm sure. Jesse, I'd love to have a bigger walk in. Uh, I filled that sucker. Shoot, yeah, I. Yeah, I, I had a lot of stuff in that at one point. Um, one of my markets pretty much filled that sucker uh, twice, actually, before I was even able to put fur in it. So. Um, Oh, PA, if you go south of 80, 30 miles, not actually, yeah, you're in awesome, awesome coon territory. Tell you what, PA trapping, next time the, the national convention's out my way, you swing on down here and you let me know. I'll show you some coon country. On one condition, you never move here. <laughs> That's, you know, Justin, I was looking for one of these and my uncle over in Illinois randomly called me up one night and he goes, hey, there's an eight by eight by seven for sale over here in Illinois. It's two years old and he wants $2,500 for it. And I said, done right now. Let's do it. Uh, sucker runs awesome. Doesn't take a lot of juice. I think I run that for... Right now, when it's cooler, about 50 to 60 bucks a month. Um, when it's hot, really hot out, costs me about 120 a month. Um, but it's a walk-in freezer, so I mean, you gotta. It's gonna take some juice, but I, I love it. Really, Otter Cat? Yeah, my uh, <laughs> that first coon I flushed out, and that's what's crazy, you know. Several times throughout the year, I come up on a coon that's that's dead in a trap. Um, sometimes you can see clearly somebody dispatched it. I don't film that stuff just because I don't I don't want to pub publish that stuff out there. But uh, you know, you wonder what happened. Like, eh, something. This wasn't natural. Something happened here. And when I found that first one today, full of bird shot. I think that's the second one this year. So of course, when I'm filming this. Uh, two out of the, what am I at, four something, had bird shot in it. Does it have the coal, cool bot on it? I don't know what that is, Justin. Uh, I'll show you what it is, though. I don't know if you can see it up there. My colony traps. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it was only granted this is my what third year with it? Something like that. Really, PA? I didn't know you had porcupine quills out there.
Yeah, scab, I get that too. Um, it's just, I don't know. I, I even had our DNR call me, didn't even call me actually. I came up to a spot and I had a raccoon dead in the snow. It was late season this year and I brought it home. Um, and then he came over to tag one of my otters that I caught from way back when. And he goes, yeah, I, I shot one of your raccoons for you. And I was like, okay. He goes, yeah, the landowner called me and said it was down there today. So I shot it and I don't know that, that bothers me. You know, if it's not past our 24 hour check, um, you know, especially when I'm keeping skulls on things, you don't know how I want to dispatch, things like that. It did bug me a little bit, but he's got a job to do, and I get it. But just, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> um, Judith and Dan, that's actually a good point. The fuzz from the furs don't, but when I'm brushing out muddy coon, or dirty coon, not muddy because I let it dry, and that dust cloud forms in here, it does get on there and I have to clean that two or three times a year um, I'll take the shop vac to it I'll turn it off and, and suck all that crap off it um, that's very good point absolutely oh Justin I know what you're talking about now I know what you're talking about SZ man how we doing bud how would I go about trapping a fox den in three feet of snow in Minnesota um, what are your conibear laws up there? I guess I'm not familiar with them. Uh, boy, I'd almost put a 220 over the top of that den if I were you. Um, I don't know if it's legal, though. Hey, Michael, thanks for stopping in. You have a good night, bud. Oh, Joshua, that's crazy. Dynamite should work. Oh, LTO. The National Convention travels everywhere. Um, last year, it was in Spencer, Iowa. This year, it's in Lima, Ohio. It's gone from New York and Pennsylvania to... I don't know how far west it goes, really. Probably to Arizona. Um, maybe Wyoming. I don't know. Maybe you guys have, can help me out here. I don't know how far west it goes. Um, but yeah, I mean, all the way down to Texas, I mean, Missouri, I, I've been to Columbia, Missouri for one. Giga Chad TJK, how we doing, bud? Uh, is there a difference between preparing first to sell and preparing them for yourself? Um, if you're going to tan a fur... For yourself, it has to be finished like what we did today. Uh, you don't necessarily have to board it and dry it if you're tanning it yourself. But you have to have the flesh removed off of it for sure. Yeah, Scab, I don't think that's the case. Uh, Callie, I don't think so. Hey, Fish on Trapper P, what's up, bud? Uh, no, we're not. It, we're just talking about that a little bit ago. It's kind of a messed up year. I don't know what to, to do here. I thought I'd be beaver trapping by now and almost done with it. And then it froze up, and now we're almost ice off. 70 degrees today, warm all week. The creeks are flowing like crazy. I thought about setting this Friday, but everyone tells me, all the real beaver trappers tell me, once ice is off, it's good trapping, but if you wait a week, it's great trapping. Well, ice is off next week. We're going to be down to the the mid teens again for lows, so I don't know I don't know how to approach it, but we're going to figure it out. Uh, I think it's been in Illinois before LTO. I think that's a state below Wisconsin, isn't it? Yeah. I think so. Hey, Eli, how we doing, bud? Oh, yeah, Dredger, we're going, bud. We're going for about another probably 20 minutes until the wife comes home from church. So, uh, Who all is going to the NTA in Lima, Ohio this year?
anybody even if you don't talk on here very much please take your case i want to i want to see Yeah, PA, exactly. Yeah, Scab, you're probably not wrong. Oh, that's too bad, Dredger. Justin, you need to come up, man. You need to make it. PA's hopefully going to be there. LTO, you start convincing, man. I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be a good time. Scab. Yeah, Jinx, I get that. So... Eli, how do your friends that run hounds, how do they feel about trappers? Uh, I'm kind of curious on that. A lot of the time, trappers and houndmen don't really get along very well. Boy, I tell you what, sun went down. It uh, actually got a little chilly in here all of a sudden. But that's good. I don't need it so hot. Justin Nar, going already, turned in vacation today. Awesome. That's cool, man. LTO, it's in Kansas. Uh, I can't tell you what side it's on, but. Oh, cool, Eli. Good. They're trappers, too. That's cool. I love finishing fur, fellas. Man, it's so much fun. It's work, but man, it's fun. I take a lot of pride in putting all them suckers up, too. One by one by one. Got some seven by seven here. Seven by seven what? I'm lost. Wow, Eli, that's cool. Justin, I really appreciate that, man. You know, uh, man, you have talked on Facebook a few times long before I ever started this channel, and, and I appreciate your support, man. Uh, I really hope you're able to make the convention up in Lima. Uh, love to actually meet you in person and and kind of shoot the bull with you buddy yeah scab you're not wrong too um i i've finished go to board a, a coon and be like man this isn't even gonna be a one xl and all of a sudden it's like three didn't see that coming but i've also done the other way where i think i have a three xl coon and it ends up being a one xl so pretty crazy Flintlock 25, I was hoping to be done in about two weeks, <laughs> and that's not going to happen. Uh, you know, a guy that's interested in my fur um, with the best prices around who I'm not able to mention because he's pretty private, uh, he's coming through here in about two weeks. Um, I was hoping to have everything done for him, but that's not going to happen, so... I was hoping to be really close to being done, yeah, and just here pretty quick-like, 
but I'm not even halfway yet. Uh, life gets busy. I basically am working more hours at work to try to make up for all the time I took off work unpaid, which was a lot. Um, it's just, it's tough. Um, LTO, I've heard a lot of good things about fiberglass, but I've never used them. I've used the cable anchors, and they worked okay, but I definitely prefer rebar over cable. But I've never used fiberglass, but what I've heard, everybody prefers that over rebar and cable. I hope you're able to make it, Justin. That'd be awesome. Yeah, Jinx, you were up there at the Iowa convention, uh, or the national one here in Iowa. Uh, that's where I finally got to meet you, so I'm glad I did. Um, it was a pretty good one. Uh, hopefully, Ohio Trapping Convention put on a good one, just like Iowa did, which I have no doubts. So I'm going to be going to the NTA. My wife was going to come with the kids, and then one of her best friends is getting married that weekend. So she's staying home going to a wedding I'm going to a convention uh, I wasn't even gonna say this but I did get asked to do a demo at the national convention on Coon um, I thought about it for about three days until my wife convinced me you need to do it uh, I'm really nervous about it because there's that demo list is a lot of experience a lot of numbers and a lot of dedication to the sport. Um, I don't quite feel worthy enough to be on that. It must have been scraping the bottom of the barrel, but I was more than honored when I got asked to do it, which I have now confirmed. But man, that's gonna be a, a very nerve wracking experience, so. Yes, Gab, you must have seen that too. I was trying to keep it kind of hush hush until he posted that that uh, deal. So now I, that's really not quiet anymore. So, um, yeah, I, I, it, it's tough for me because you know these guys that do these demos have 30 to 40, 50 years of experience and have traveled state after state after state, and I haven't done that. You know, I've got a wife and kids. I'm pretty grounded but I put my heart and soul into trapping coon. And I think I do have something to bring to the table for the average trapper to help them improve. But I'm not to the level of some of these guys, so it's kind of, it's nerve wracking. It's gonna be a very, very good experience, but very nervous experience for me for sure. That may be, Justin, but in my area, honestly, my numbers aren't that impressive by any means. You know, there literally are guys that are catching 2,000 to 3,000 coon a year when the num when the prices are there. Uh, they're just sitting dormant right now waiting for the market to come back. And with no competition, it, makes, it does make it a little easier for me to catch larger numbers. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm in coon capital of the world, quite literally. I mean... You go, what, 150 miles southwest of me, you will not find better coon population than what's there, period. LTO, I don't even want to ask. You know what's funny is I'm already following my my trails and looking for coon sign already. Uh, some of these roads that I've been driving recently I'm unfamiliar with, and I'm already looking like, all right, that's beans this year. That's going to be corn. 
Oh, they've got timber on the other side. That's going to be a good location. <clears throat> Things like that. It really excites me. Uh, Scab, what do you mean how I'm going to do it? I'm kind of curious what you mean by that. Yeah, that, that's that's what I'm thinking, Justin. Like, I do have stuff to bring to the table. I do have confidence in myself to to teach people that, you know, the average person what's going on. Um, it's just a little intimidating, you know, being my first time doing something like that, especially on a, on a scale like that. But I, I do feel like I do have something to bring to the table that I can help people with for sure. Um, I've just got a lot of rehearsing and, and learning to do. Uh, about doing a demo before that. Oh yeah, Anthony, we're still here for a little bit. Scab, I haven't yet, but I will be. I guarantee you I rehearse it probably 15 or 20 times before I before the day comes. Flintlock 25, um... <clears throat> Yes and no. Uh, I love trapping coyotes and footholds. I do. But I don't get... Around here, I couldn't get the numbers um, necessarily that I can for coon. Uh, in the road ditches, I could probably I could probably rack up 30 to 40 coyotes in the road ditches fairly easily. I shouldn't even say fairly easily. It'd be difficult, but doable. Uh, but around here, we're in deer capital of the world too. And to get private ground permission... I won't say it's crazy hard, but it's difficult because everything around me is leased for deer hunting. There is no hunting, trapping, fishing going on outside of that leaseholder knowledge until January 10th. Um, and it is frustrating. You know, private ground, I've got some good family farms that I can trap on, and I could probably pick up 10 to 15, 20 coyotes on private ground and footholds if I really tried, but you know, I can't get access to thousands and thousands of acres around here on private ground because it's all leased up for deer hunting. Oh, you're good LTO. Thanks, Justin. Nar, I appreciate it, buddy. Uh, we'll find out for sure. No, LTO, I'm going to focus on locations. Uh, most, you know, I'm a dry land trapper, so it's going to be mostly what to look for for dry land trapping. Um, things of that nature. And I think that's why I bring a dis different aspect. The common trapper, when they think of coon, are generally thinking water. Um, especially the, the younger or inexperienced trappers are thinking water. And it's great because you will catch a lot of coon in water. But you'll also catch a pretty fair amount of large, large coon on dry ground. And I'm going to kind of push that issue a little bit, but we'll figure it out. I could, Justin, but the problem is by that point, we've most of the time got two foot of snow on the ground and we only got another two weeks of season. Uh, three weeks a season, but it's just, it's a lot harder to do, um, and I don't have a side-by-side -side or a four-wheeler to go busting through snow drifts, um, so it just, and I got basically my truck, she's a highway princess, you know, all-terrain tires, crew cab, GMC pickup, nothing that's gonna, gonna really go out there and, and go through some fields, so it, it's just tough, um, I'm not set up, my whole setup and how I run is not, not ready for that. Oh, yeah, Anthony. We'll still be on Friday, too. Exactly, Scab. And that's why I'm pretty much all trapped in public ground. Because, I mean, yeah, the it's so hard to get on the private stuff around here. And like I said, I've got a few farms that I definitely could trap. And I plan to next year. I am going to focus more on coyotes next year. 
um, put a little more effort into them early on. But I'm not – I if I catch 15 or 20, I'd be very, very surprised. Uh, it's just it's just my system. I'm a coon guy on the roads, and that's where my numbers are. And that's just, I don't know, kind of how I am. So um, I do potentially have a trip lined up for next year. That would be fun uh, if everything plans out. Um, I won't even be in the state of Iowa on opening day next year. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. No, Justin, we, January 31st is our cutoff. All trapping stops January 31st except Beaver. <laughs> LTO, no, that's all right. Uh, Joshua, if I do get anything, it's going to be a side-by-side. -side. Um, my neighbor here, just to the west of me, about, oh, probably 600 yards, um, he owns like 300 acres that surrounds me. He's got all kinds of trails out there miles of trails and we'd like to get a side-by-side -side to be able to take the kids out riding and just have fun and drive through the trails he lets us do pretty much anything we want out there um so that's that's the plan eventually but you know no shoot a shoot a, a new side-by-side -side, you're looking at 20 grand pretty easy for for a really nice one so we'll see Oh, cool, PA trapping. Yeah, Justin, right? I agree. Yeah, Flintlock, that's what's tough. That's tough. Yeah, Eli, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you got a good coyote up there, too, up in South Dakota. Uh, I'm not sure about the eastern part. I think the... The western part has the better coyotes, if I'm not mistaken. What do you mean, LTO? What would happen with a 1K coon season? That would be cool, PA. That would be awesome. No, oh, nice, Joshua. No, I, I'd be wanting a side by side if we do anything. Oh, nice, Justin. Yeah, I, I want one big enough to hold me and the wife and both kids. So. Wow, Scab, that's crazy. Giga Chad, absolutely. Um, if you got a crick by your place, you know, describe your crick a little bit. Is it, you know, ankle deep, three foot wide? Um, is it five foot deep, 15 feet wide? Uh, any body of water though will catch coon pretty much even your pond uh, Chances are there's gonna be a little trail that goes around right on the water's edge if you got water and, and the mud There's gonna be a trail right along the edge of it sometimes in the water sometimes on the ground and you'll see it It's just this <clears throat> it'll look like a little slide um, Going through and that's great coon location. Absolutely uh, your crick if it's deep enough It's gonna hold muskrat mink coon um, it, yeah, absolutely. Focus on the cricks if you're just starting off, for sure. Uh, LTO, yeah, I think I would. I think I would. Oh, really, Justin? Yeah, it, it probably would be at least an 800. Uh, LTO, I'm guessing Scab pays some good money to join one if he is part of one.
No, oh, that's cool, Eli. That's cool. I always wanted to go to uh, South Dakota spring muskrat trapping. I thought that'd be so fun, but they just they shut it down to non-residents, and that's disappointing. But it is what it is. Yeah, that. For me, that'd definitely be a one-time thing, but boy, that'd be an experience, wouldn't it? That would be an experience, chasing a lion around. I gotta take a lot of coon off board jets tonight, too. Just kind of keeps going, keep going and going. About knee deep and five something feet wide. Oh, Giga Chad, you are in perfect habitat for everything, then, my man. Absolutely. Um, if you're just getting your feet wet into trapping, absolutely set that. Set that 100%. Everything outdoors, how are we doing, bud? Yeah, Scab, I figured, um, we used to guide pheasant hunters uh, way down in southeast Iowa, or southwest Iowa, in Creston, I think it was, uh, way down there. But these guys came up from Texas to hunt at this club, and it was $10,000 a year, so... You think, Justin, that they will? Um, I've never seen all the muskrats around here. They seem to be very vegetarian. Uh, I've never seen them eat anything meat or aquatic other than roots and stuff. But um, definitely, you know, we're in different parts of the country too. So, Too bad we can't. I don't think humans can eat those freshwater clams, but I found a bunch of them in some of my duck hunting spots that are, I mean, just monstrous things. Everything outdoors is pouting. Your season's over. I get it, bud. Our season ended, and it's one of those things where I was so ready to be done, but within a week, I was so ready to be started again. Huh, interesting, Justin. That's crazy. Yeah, Joshua, plan on another, my normal Friday Night Live. Um, this was just kind of a, a, a different look at how I flesh. Um, you know, I hope some people got a little bit of use out of it. But, uh, yeah, so that's, we'll do our normal Friday Night, kind of shoot the bowl live. And then, hopefully, the following week, I'm trapping beavers, so. That's crazy, Scab. Hey, Joshua, you have a good night, bud. Thanks for stopping in, my man. I already said that. I did say that. But, yeah. We'll be here Friday, buddy. Yeah, everything outdoors. We're waiting on our ice is disappearing, but it's gonna come back. I'm afraid, so that's kind of kind of messing with me. Exactly, Mark. Yeah, it's like it's a bittersweet thing. You you're ready for that break, but at the same time, you don't want to quit. So. All right, Eli. Yeah, I agree with Scab. Um, an otter will clean a pond out quick. Uh, 
I've had several farmers reach out to me with otter problems. Um, they they can clean a pond out really bad, especially if you get a good family of them in there. Uh, what do you mean, LTO? What do I get for beavers? PA, um, I definitely can do that. But in the road ditches, most of the time I don't have a den. Uh, if I go on the private property after beaver, there's a lot of dens. But I generally, that's not my go-to. Um, you know, it'll spook a beaver, the rest of the beaver pretty quick. Uh, but I do love 330s for sure. Uh, Briar, this is going to be my third year spring beaver trapping. The first year I caught 18. Last year I caught 44. I'm hoping for 100 this year if everything goes right. Huh, that's interesting, Giga Chad. I'm just snapping turtles in there. That's interesting. Uh, LTO, right now, my buyer's saying that beaver prices are coming back up a little bit. We're looking probably about six bucks a pound finished. Oh, no kidding, Scab. That's crazy. Nice, PA. I got a good buddy up there that's a hell of a fox trapper, um, and he caught his first beaver ever last year, and this past fall caught his second one, so pretty cool. Braden, like I said before, uh, message me, iowatrapper2 at gmail. Um, I'd love to help you out a little more, buddy, especially if it's your first year. Oh, nice, LTO. That's awesome. Wow, really, Scab? That's crazy. Wow, Briar. That's crazy. You guys have an awesome... You guys probably have beaver like we have raccoon up here. Um, that's impressive. 357 beaver. I'm assuming you're keeping the, the caster off them. I'm kind of curious where your caster prices are down there. If you don't mind sharing. Um, obviously don't share if you don't want to. But Nice PA. Catch one in the long spring. Well, LTO, um, one thing I'll say, if you're trying to completely get rid of all the beaver, that's not necessarily an easy job, bud. Um, it's not It's not like a lot of animals. They get smart real quick. If you throw a 330 in front of a den entrance, you're not going to catch another animal in that 330, in my opinion. Um, because they get smart. You know, they, they see one of their... The people they den with basically dead in a 330 outside the door of their house they get smart they get real smart so um to completely eradicate beaver is not necessarily something for a beginner um not saying you shouldn't try it not saying you shouldn't go out and have fun um but it but it can be very difficult Yeah, I figured, Briar. I figured, buddy. Yeah, it's it's casters getting rough. Not terrible, but it's definitely gone down. Yeah, Scab, exactly what I was talking about. Yep, Justin, Justin's been there too. Um, you know, not to discourage you, LTO, by any means, but Beaver gets smart very, very quickly. Uh, you know, if if you say you use a caster mound and and miss a beaver you know you, you pinch a toe or something it is almost impossible to catch that beaver in a caster mound set or any lured set um 
and he's going to he's going to den up for a while. You know, they get smart very very quick. Yeah, Flintlock, they're going down. I would almost extend that out a little bit, LTO. I'd start on the far outreaches of that beaver territory, probably farther than you even think beaver are traveling. Um, if you have a bank den somewhere or a lodge, 200 yards away, I'd be putting foothold traps on drowners or whatever you got um, just to keep the, the adults are going to go the furthest and then the two-year-olds or, well, year-and-a-half-year-olds, whatever you want to call them, two-year-olds basically now. Uh, they'll travel a little bit, but then those young ones will stay close to home. And it seems like the young ones are always the last ones to leave the, or the first ones to leave the den. So you catch a young one, now you just educate all the ones that are older and smarter than that. That's crazy, Briar, but especially with your, your beaver experience, that's amazing. That's one, one hell of a smart beaver. Yep, like what Scab said, you work from the outside in. <laughs> Jinx wants to go. Jinx wants to go. All right, guys, we better wrap this up. Um, I got to get inside. The wife and kids should be home anytime now. Uh, it's after 8 o'clock here. My daughter's bedtime is 8 o'clock. So as soon as she comes home, it's bath time, bedtime. And uh, it was fun, guys. You know, I hope I helped out a few beginning trappers on here learn how to put up fur. Um, maybe some of you guys that are even more experienced than me picked up a thing or two. Uh, who knows? That, but that's what we got to do. We got to share our knowledge, share it with people, and learn from each other. Because if we don't, we're dying. Wow, Briar, 75 odd or two. PA, I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised. Oh, absolutely. Thanks, Flintlock. Uh, Jinx, it was fun. It was fun. I love doing these things. What? Even before you got here, Jinx, there's so many communications amongst each other in the in the chat. Um, people talking about different strategies for, for coyote and stuff. <clears throat> it was awesome. It was awesome. I love seeing that. I don't even have to be a part of it, but seeing other trappers connect with trappers, that's great. Yeah, Otter Cat. They're not bad. They're pretty clean yet, luckily. Absolutely, Giga Chad. Um, if you have any questions, you know, Iowa Trapper on Facebook, um, shoot me a message or, you know, Iowa Trapper 2 at gmail.com. Um, send me an email. I'm happy to help you out any way I can, man. Oh, yeah, Justin. I'll see you on Friday. Uh, looking forward to it. Should be a good time. So, anyway, guys, uh, yeah. We're about. Oh. We're not quite halfway done. Not quite halfway. So, plenty of time to go yet, but same time, we're trapping beaver. So, you guys have a good night, and uh, I hate leaving. I really do, but what do you do? What's Mark dropping? Oh, yeah, Mark, drop it, man. Absolutely. Whose live's going on right now? Mark, whose live's going on? I'm curious now. It really is, Otter Cat. It's so sad to leave. Uh-oh, wife is officially home. Mark, if you're going to drop it, drop it now. Who's everybody going to? Where's the live?
Dark 30? Oh, I want to see Dark 30. Yep. iPad's still in the garage. Everybody head over to Dark 30. Check him out. And we are out of here, guys. Thank you so much.